It's 1870 and there are only 9,000 US citizens in the whole of the Wyoming Territory. Almost all of the land is owned by the government. In the late 1860s, the Union Pacific Railroad had crossed the south of Wyoming, meaning that throughout the 1870s, massive cattle ranches develop. The ranches are financed by rich investors, many of which are British. As the population in the territory increases, cattlemen deemed worthy and respectable are appointed to all the key positions in government and the judiciary. Court judges. 1892, the Johnson County War. The winter of 1886 into 1887 is very harsh and causes terrible losses to the herds of big cattlemen, whose influence and power is weakened as a result. Small ranchers come out better from the winter and the big ranchers believe this is because the small ranchers have stolen many of their cows. Whilst rustling, stealing animals, has always been a problem on the open range, this is different because the big ranchers are struggling to survive. The big ranchers decide to make a move. They use their association with the Wyoming Stock Growers Association, WSGA, to ban small ranchers they suspect of rustling from the spring roundup. However, ordinary people are fed up of the way big ranchers are constantly grabbing everything for themselves, and so juries, made up of ordinary people, almost never convict anyone accused of rustling by big ranchers. This causes big ranchers to discuss taking the law into their own hands. Things flare up in 1889 when small ranchers Jim Averill and Ella Watson are lynched. The pair farm a homestead of 670 acres in the middle of an open range pasture used by a cattleman called Albert Bothwell. They have a legal claim to the land but Bothwell wants them gone. Jim writes a letter to a local newspaper calling big ranchers nothing but rich land grabbers. Then, in 1889, Ella obtains a small herd of cattle. Bothwell accuses her of rustling his cows, and he and his men seize Ella and Jim and hang them. Soon after, Bothwell takes over both the land and Ella's cattle. Other killings and murder attempts follow, leaving three small ranch owners dead. In 1892, homesteaders and small ranchers decide to team up and establish their own association, deciding they will hold their own roundup a month before the WSGAs. This means they can claim all that spring's unbranded new calves for themselves. The Wyoming Stock Growers Association are fed up and decide it's time to take action. They look back to a vigilante campaign in 1884 called Stuart Stranglers for inspiration, where a cattleman called Granville Stewart had led a series of targeted attacks and killings directed at suspected rustlers, which had significantly lowered the rustling activity and got Stewart elected as head of the Montana Stock Growers Association. The rich cattlemen of the WSGA plan a full-scale invasion of Johnson County, in full knowledge of the governor of Wyoming, planning to kill 70 men who they claim should die for the good of the country. They raise a fund of $100,000 to carry out their plan, mostly intended for legal fees after the killings are done. 22 Texan gunmen are hired and paid $5 a day plus expenses with a bonus of $50 for every rustler they kill. These gunmen are brought into Wyoming on a train specifically supplied by the Union Pacific Railroad Company. Despite all this, being well armed and supplied, the invaders fail their mission, so when they learn that two men from their hit list, Nate Champion and his partner Nick Ray, are at KC Ranch, they abandon their original plan and attack the ranch instead. Nate manages to hold them off all day from the ranch's log cabin. However, the invaders eventually set fire to the cabin, causing Nate to run for it, but he is shot down. Word of the invasion soon reaches Sheriff Angus of Johnson County, who quickly raises a force of 40 men to go after the invaders. Outraged citizens of Buffalo, the main town in Johnson County, also join. When a newspaper reporter asks one of them if they're joining because they're a rustler, the man replies, no, but I'm fighting for my home and my property. The invaders fortify themselves at TA Ranch, surrounded by 300 angry Johnson County residents, and are only able to leave when the US 6th Cavalry arrives and saves them. 
This kind of armed conflict between factions for control of land in the American West is known as a range war, named after the range, the plains. The Johnson County War is the best known of the range wars. When this goes to trial, the invaders have the advantage of powerful friends. The state governor, the judge, the Wyoming US Marshal, and two US senators had supported the WSGA plan. The governor had requested that troops be sent to TA Ranch to prevent further bloodshed. The troops then take the invaders away from Johnson County to Fort Fetterman, in case citizens try to lynch them, despite the protests of Sheriff Angus. Backed by the $100,000 fund, the WSGA hires the best Chicago lawyers. These lawyers then convince the judge that it's impossible for their clients to have a fair trial in Johnson County, so the trial is then moved to Cheyenne, the state capital, where jury members are much more likely to favour rich, respectable men over ordinary small ranchers. Knowing that Johnson County, the prosecution, is short of money, the lawyers extend the trial as much as they can until the prosecutors run out of money. Once they can no longer afford the trial costs, they are forced to drop the charges against the accused. One reason the Johnson County War is significant is that it shows that vigilante justice continued to be used as a solution to problems with a lack of law and order right the way through the 19th century, even up to the 1890s. Eventually, when farmers fence off their land, bringing an end to the open range, tensions calm down. 1892, the Johnson County War. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell all your friends. If you like what I do enough you think I should get paid for it, then feel more than free to check out my Patreon, which can be found at patreon.com forward slash a long, long time ago. Wissad ye hala.